Hi there fellow coin collectors. A while ago I was having a look at my South African second decimal coin collection, also known as the Nickel series. As a quick side note, this is an excellent series to start with, as the bulk of the coins can be had for, well, almost nothing at all. In fact, just yesterday I picked up this 1982 one cent coin while on my morning run. It's unfortunate that the coin is damaged, as it is in uncirculated condition with beautiful luster and stripe toning on both the reverse and on the obverse. Not bad for a 40 year old coin lying on a tar road. The series features a few key dates as well. The 1965 Afrikaans 1 Rand and 1965 Afrikaans 1 Cent comes to mind. Not to mention the legendary 1965 English 50 Cent coin. In Franz Chamalan's book, History of the Nickel Coins of South Africa, a book of course which I can highly recommend, an advertisement dated 1969 features a proof-like 1965 English 50 cent piece as well as the elusive proof 1931 tiki. Yeah, the 50 cent is considered rarer and more valuable. Which brings us to the one rand coin, which is of course the main topic of this video as well. Now the one rand coin can be rather confusing though with conflicting, sometimes ambiguous sources. But let's start with a question for the experts first. And the question is, in which year, referring to the date on the coin, was the first South African coin minted that bear the word RAND? Stick around, I'll provide an answer during the video. Anyway, the first official one RAND coin meant for circulation was minted in 1965 in both Afrikaans and in English. The coin consisted of 80% silver, uh, weighing 15 grams with a diameter of 32.7 millimeters. Now, these silver coins were issued until 1976 alongside the brown paper one rand note, of which the last was issued in 1977. Now, the coin was never really meant for circulation after 1969, as the intrinsic value of the coin exceeded face value. This was as a result of skyrocketing silver prices. Nevertheless, the coin was still minted and circulated, albeit in limited quantities. In 1977, the decision was made to discontinue the one rand note and introduce a new nickel one rand coin. Now, it's quite easy to mistake the silver and the nickel coins for each other, as the new coin still features a springbok. The new coin is slightly smaller at 31 millimeters and also slightly lighter at 12 grams. Interestingly enough, according to the Hearns catalogue, no proof one rand coins, uh, nickel coins, were struck between 1977 and 1983. This might seem odd, because well, what about all the proof sets that were issued during that time? Well, the proof sets were still released with silver one rand coins, for reasons I'm not quite sure of. Maybe for sentimental value, or maybe to give the proof sets some higher intrinsic value. I can't say for certain. For example, here is a 1983 proof set featuring the silver one rand coin, as you can see. Um, from 1984 onward, both the silver and the nickel one rand uh, featured in the proof set. Um, let me see if I can get an example of that. Okay, so here is a 1985 example uh, proof set. So you'll see here's the nickel one rand coin. And here's the silver one rand coin, which is a commemorative coin that was issued in that year. Now, silver one rand coins, typically referred to as the Pratia series, are still being struck as special commemorative coins. And since 1990, contains 92.5% silver. Oddly enough, the numismatic value hasn't increased as was expected. And as a rule, these coins are typically well struck with beautiful detailed devices. So, for example, here's a 1982 um, silver one rand coin. Uh, this was issued in 1982. As you can see, the design is exactly the same as a nickel uh, coin of the time. Uh, but this was a coin that you would be able to find in the proof set of, of, of that year. And then in 1988, three coins were actually issued, three silver coins. And this is... Uh, I'll quickly go through them. So this is uh, the Bartolomeas Diaz uh, coin, 
commemorating the, the trip of uh, Diaz uh, around the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, so this is 1988. Just look at that detailed design and devices on the reverse. There was also um, a coin commemorating the Groot track of the Voer trackers over the Dragensburg between 1838 or at, uh, 19, uh, at 1838. Um, so that's 150 years. So that's the Groot track. There's the reverse. Obverse is the same. The coat of arms of 1988. And then lastly, we have the Eichenwürte uh, coin. Um, this is a BF67. So you can see also, also a commemorative coin uh, that was also issued at, um, in 1988. Well, that's the story as I understood it, until I checked NGC's census records. Now, as you can see, NGC lists around 100 proof nickel coins for the years 1977 until 1983. Keep in mind that according to Hearns, these coins are estimated to be valued at around 10,000 Rand per coin. I highly doubt whether one of these 100 coins um, would fetch such a high price. Now, although the difference between proof-like and um, proof coins or proof strikes can be really hard to distinguish, especially with older coins, it is somewhat unlikely that NGC would mislabel close to 100 such coins. Uh, but, of course, I could be wrong here. I have been wrong before. I think it was a drizzly Tuesday. Anyway, <laughs> it's quite a conundrum, and I'm definitely going to keep looking into this. Maybe some proofs were minted, and these were never recorded. To add further insult to injury, I don't even own any of these proof nickel coins. I never looked. I mean, they shouldn't exist. Well, I'm definitely going to have a look at them now and see if I can find, find some of them. Anyway, that's just my, you know, well, two cents on the matter. It's these kinds of intricacies that makes numismatics really so interesting and very much rewarding. Anyway... Keep well and happy collecting. Oh, and on the question of earlier, before I forget, the answer is, of course, believe it or not, 1932. Decimalization was proposed to circumvent gold from leaving the country after Britain abandoned the gold standard. This happened as people would use Rhodesian silver coins to buy gold and then smuggle that out of the country. However, this idea was shelved as the gold standard was also abandoned in the same year by the South African government. Now, these are ultra rare pattern pieces and a piece of interesting South African history. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic 2023.